I'm gonna share with you how pro producers approach producing in such a way that makes mixing 10 times easier. And it's probably not what you think. I'm gonna do this by showing you a production that I co-produced and co-wrote with a buddy of mine, Forrest Whitehead, who also has a couple of Grammy nominations, so I would say there's probably gonna be some value in this video. Here's the thing, so many home studio producers think that in order to get amazing productions, it has to all come down to getting amazing mixes. And spoiler, the, the main thing that's gonna make your production sound awesome is not the mixing. Yes, mixing is a very crucial component, it's a very important component, but it's not the one thing. The problem is that so many home studio producers produce in such a way that it actually makes it harder for them to create great mixes because they're making bad choices on the production front during the producing part. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So Nathan, what is this magical tip or trick that you have for me in today's video? And it's not actually a tip or trick, it's a process. It's the process of arranging with the mix in mind. So let's just jump on the whiteboard and talk about it. So arranging with the mix in mind, what exactly is arranging with the mix in mind? It's actually really simple. It has everything to do with frequencies. Okay, now when you're thinking about arrangement, arrangement is essentially the process of what is happening, when it is happening, and then what it is doing. So for example, arrangement would be what? It's guitar, right? When, verse one, and then what is it doing? It's just doing a strumming pattern. So that's ultimately gonna be kind of the process of arrangement. That's about as simple as it gets. Now the problem is, is that so many home studio producers, they take this, which is frequency, and they make mistakes by arranging in such a way where their frequencies, are not working together in the arrangement. Now here's the problem. If you arrange a production, okay, so if you have a whole track, a whole production, and the arrangement has problems fundamentally with this frequency, your mixing job is going to be so difficult. Even a professional mixing engineer is gonna take a look at that and be like, dude, this is not gonna work. This is gonna be very difficult. So what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is the idea of overload, okay? Overload. When you're thinking about arrangement, you need to be thinking about the frequency spectrum, right? You have this whole spectrum of frequencies from basically, you know, let's say 20 hertz, okay, all the way up to about 20K, which 20K is gonna be super, 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 super simple, sibilant. But the problem is that so many home studio producers will arrange in such a way that all of this stuff in here, okay, which is the mid range, is like completely overloaded. They're gonna have guitars, they're gonna have keys, right? They're gonna have vocals, right? They're gonna have more guitars, right? And then you've gotta have drums in there too, and there's drums in there as well. And there's all of this stuff happening, you know, all of these rhythm guitars happening. There's, there might even be like an arpeggiated keyboard part in there and all this stuff, and all of this, is going to get extremely overloaded. And then they do the same thing on the low frequencies, okay? Where you're gonna have your kick drum, you're gonna have your bass, all this stuff happening here. But then you've got more bass, and then maybe you've got all this other junk that's filling up all of this low mid-range stuff. And guess what the problem is? The problem is, is that while you think, I'm making it sound fat, I'm making it sound super big. The problem is when you got all of this, what does this look like? This looks like a hot mess, right? And it's gonna sound like a hot mess too. We're not even talking about mix. We're talking about the sound of instrument, the instrument choice, the sound selections, the sound design, and how all of this interacts with each other. And then the same thing can happen on this, in the high frequencies, where you're gonna have all sorts of harshness, right? I suppose I should probably use red since we're using black. Harsh, that's all gonna be really harsh. And the problem is, is if everything's really harsh and you've got all of these things, you've got, you know, high guitars, you've got synth, You've got your symbols, all of this stuff existing up in here. Guess what? It's gonna sound really harsh. And so a lot of times when people say things like, my track sounds super, you know, super woofy and bassy and I just can't figure out, but it doesn't sound like it has clarity. And the crazy thing is, is that in many cases, if you want your track to sound bigger, it actually means that you should take some stuff out. It actually might have to do with you already have too much stuff that they're all trying to work together and you're trying to find a way to piece this together. And the problem is, is that kills clarity. It kills clarity. Now this is actually a very simple concept. The concept of this, and this is why I want to show you, because you can visually see how messy this is. You can visually see that, holy smokes, if we are actually doing this and if we're arranging in such a way where we're throwing all of these instruments in all over the place and there's just, you know, whatever, <laughs> I think you can get the idea that we can visually look at this and realize, wow, there is way too much happening. Instead, what would a good example look like? Since this is super messy and super muddy, what would a good example look like? Let's clear the board and talk about it. All right, so we talked about what not to do. 
let's talk about what to do. And after we do this, we're gonna look at my DAW and I'm gonna actually show you some real world examples. What we're gonna have in a solid production that is arranged properly with the mix in mind is two things in the low end, okay? So pretty much at about this range here, which we're gonna say is maybe about 100, 80 to 100 is kind of where we're gonna be going. This is the low end, okay, 80 to 100. What do we want to exist in this area? Well, what we want in this area is really two things primarily, kick and bass, kick, and bass. Now kick and bass are also going to exist in some of the higher frequencies, but the core element, the core essence of what is gonna be existing in the bottom end is gonna be kick and bass. That's it. Let's kind of talk about this because this is something I think is really important to talk about. Bass, it could be more than one. But when we're thinking about using more than one, so for example, in some of the productions I'm working on right now, I'm working on a track right now where I double track bass, pan them super hard, hard right, hard left, and then I also have synth bass, but they are working together. It could be more than one bass, but, but, big but, in order for this to work, they must do what? Complement. They must complement each other. In other words, they cannot be existing in such a way where it's adding a lack of clarity. We actually are going to want to make sure that the sounds that we choose, the very essence of sound that we are using, we're talking about sound design and sound selection, they have to work together. That is a topic for another conversation. And then you've got your kick, which again, you might have more than one kick, but again, they have to complement each other. Now, what's going to happen in the mid range? Okay, what's going to happen in this 200? hertz to kind of up in here in this in this area here in the 2000 range and above okay well one of the biggest things and we're gonna kind of do it like this vocals up here assuming that we have vocals in the in the production vocals needs to stand and have the most room okay vocals need to kind of be doing this okay vocals and then what we're gonna do next we'll say keys and guitars okay and then that is going to do something like this. Now I'm not making this line to demonstrate uh, the frequencies that they exist in because it's gonna be in this range, okay? There's not like a cutoff and a start or whatever. It's a ballpark of range. But the main reason I'm making this smaller is that in the, in the grand scheme of things, in the arrangement, the keyboards and the guitars and things like that are gonna be lower in the mix overall. So we have to bear that in mind. And this is what I'm talking about. We're thinking about how do I actually wanna mix this in the end? You wanna be arranging with that in mind. So keys and guitars, Guitars. Okay, now what's gonna exist up in this stuff? This could also be guitars and keys, but this is gonna be more the stuff that's in the higher register. So this is what we're talking about when the guitars are actually playing higher up on the neck, doing some lead stuff, for example, or keys or synth. You know, if you have a higher pad synth or a stabby synth lead part, it's gonna exist higher up. This is also where your cymbals are going to exist. And this is also going to be where sibilance exists and that's going to be on words s's and t's and things like that and actually that's going to be a lot more like in this kind of a range a lot higher 5k not so much okay so now look at this all of a sudden we now have a much cleaner looking example of what an arrangement might be now when we're thinking about arranging, we might have lots of layers of things, but you need to be thinking in terms of the broad chunk. So what are my guitars doing? Let's make sure I'm producing guitars. You might have five, six, seven different layers of guitars, but they have to be complementing each other so that they are existing in such a way where when you are arranging, you are thinking about, is this gonna be a nightmare to mix? frequency wise. And if that is a yes, and you are putting too much stuff, you need to dial it back and really come back to this concept. So let's actually take a look at the DAW and see some real world examples. What I'm showing you right now is not the mixed version. I'm showing you the produced version before mix. But what I really want to do is kind of break down what we've already talked about so far. Now, the very first thing is, is that we talked about bass, the bass elements. I want to talk about this because we look at this, these are three different bass elements that we have in this track in total. But what you can notice is that these three are not all happening at the same time. These two are happening at the same time quite a lot, but there are even times where we take out this super eight bass, okay? You can see examples here where we had all three and then we took it out and then we took it out because it was, it was just too much, okay? Now, let's go ahead and show you this, uh, this drop right here. Okay, so that's the example of this kind of drop moment. So just looking at the bass here. Okay, that's what we have. 
But when I play that, if I didn't show you the fact that this had two separate tracks, we would probably be hearing this as a single sound. And this is the problem is that a lot of times producers will layer their basses, but the problem is they're not finding sounds that actually complement each other. They're basically just throwing in a bunch of basses because they think I need more low end. That's not how you get more low end. The way you get more low end is by having clarity of low end, okay? They complement each other very, very well. That's the only thing happening in the bass as far as like a guitar synthy bass kind of element. And then what do we have in the drums? Well, let's take a listen. We've got a single kick. Okay. And so we put this in context with all the percussion and all of the bass elements. Here's what we wind up with. That sounds really great. There's a lot of nice low end there and there's a lot of clarity happening. So then we move up a little bit. Okay, what happens in the mid range? Well, we've got these strings happening, but, but that's actually a lot of stuff that's happening higher up as well. We have this brass. There's a little bit more of a higher shimmer on that as well. And then we've got these, these things in here kind of do the same thing. But all three of these sounds are doing the exact same thing. So again, the whole goal here is to complement these sounds. And if we listen to them individually, here's one. Okay, here's two. Here's three. So they don't even all sound that great soloed out, but you put them together. That sounds awesome. Okay, what else do we have going on here? Well, we have this piano part going on here, and this is gonna be in some of the mid range. So if you think about what's actually happening in the mid-range, it's really the piano and strings, pretty much. And what are they doing? They're doing the same thing. It's not like we have 15 different things happening all at the same time. It's two things, okay, doing the exact same thing, but they're texturally filling up a little bit of a different kind of a space. And then we have this little brass hit thing going on. And that's just accenting those hits. It's a little brighter. It's got some space up top. And then we add these uh, melodic elements. and we'd be using panning to accomplish a wider sound. I don't think there's any panning on this right now. And then we have the vocal kind of doing its little ad lib moment. And guess what? That's, that's literally it. It sounds like there's so much more happening in here than there actually is. Guess what? A part of arranging with a mix of mind is having push and pull, tension and release, where there's the big moment, the small moment, the, the dynamic moment. We start this whole song. It's 2 45 in the morning. It's just piano and vocals. We don't even add anything until quite a bit later where this drop happens. We have this little interlude. We don't need to throw the whole kitchen sink all at once. And then with verse two. So what am I supposed to say when it won't mean much? Here's the thing, if you wanna go even deeper on this and actually see how I produce a track from start to finish and actually applying everything that we've talked about here, you really need to check out 14 Day Music Producer. We're launching it in two weeks. It's not live yet. You can join our wait list with the link in the description down below. In two weeks we're launching. It's gonna be on a huge discount for about a week only. But if you're watching this video after we've already launched, you can check it out by clicking the link in the description. We'll see you soon.